two days ago I was asked like if I can do a talk and like yeah two days to make a presentation why not <laughs> so I actually made it and I finished doing it like about like about two hours ago so this is the first time I read what I've written so let's see how this works let's see how this works and um, the title of the presentation I mean is sort of su suggestive uh, is like how tech writers can become youtubers what I really wanted to talk is maybe not how but why I mean we're tech writers we're writing docs we are good at that so why do we suddenly want to actually want to do the videos so here's the thing here's the thing I want to talk both why and how but before I do that I want to do two things uh, first motivate you so you listen to me carefully is I, I'll talk about myself and I'll repeat the ad for the developer relations event that is happening later this month so basically People working in developer relations and technical writers care about the same things, mostly or very similar things. And um, on the next meetup, we're gonna talk about open source. And um, I really, really, really want we have a one talking slot for 15 minutes that somebody, hopefully from this room or whoever watches this talk uh, later on, um, I want a tech writer, or like I wish that a tech writer who has experience working with open source software tells their experience of how do how do you inspire community do the do the do the documentation it's so hard like how do you help them through the docs what are the process what are the moves what's the bad so 15 minutes slots please yay we have Good. Then the future <laughs> <No, laughs> is over. That's right. so what is going here? <laughs> no, because, because you mentioned that uh, tech writers, but in the beginning of this multimeter questionnaire, yeah. we actually have more than tech writers. We have UX writers, and uh, is UX writer actually welcome at your events? Yeah. <laughs> Do you yeah. want to be so so, so, <laughs> Let's make a second detour. So, tech writers my, I wish. I wish that we were able to discuss the UX topics at our event and like from, from developer relations perspective we can detour slightly but let's put it this way um, people working in developer relations very often become UX specialists because they interact with users directly and like often physically and they bring this experience back to the product team and to EX people and it's 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 a nice way to talk to it. and same with the with the with the people writing documentation. And uh, let just not steal the, the, the focus from the talk. I will gladly discuss how developer relations and tech writers and UX people work together to for 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 for, for better future but not now. Uh, in the question section or later on with the pizza. So now, like, uh, that's the picture with, with, with some teen with a camera. That's me being a teen. I already held the camera, I work for uh, for a local TV channel whatsoever. But I'm trying to explain why you listen to it. So, yeah, I always have kept the camera. And, uh, then, still a teen, but already I worked at a like I graduated like my master in computer science and then got employed in a small startup called Unit Technologies. Does anybody in this room know what Unit Technologies is? So yeah, so it was like a small, small, small startup. Today it's a multi-billion company and like spent six years there. I was sort of like the face of the company. So the company creates a game engine and that's the product for programmers. So I was like the interface between the programmers, game developers of the world and this company in this part of the globe. There were two of us. So my colleague was dedicated to the other part of the globe, I was dedicated to this part of the globe. So what do you do in this job? Well, you talk to people, you onboard people, you travel with salespeople to talk to the tech people who the salespeople try to sell the software to. So basically, I represented 
the knowledge, the technical knowledge of the company. So I did tech support on board, uh, onboarding. I wrote tutorials. I wrote like all kind of materials and and, and, and presentations. I was a tool to run the alpha and beta of that software and so basically I've been all around that and technical writing was a big part of that and and so yeah um, 11 years doing one thing in game development and my talk today is based on the sort of last year of what I have been doing at King and that's where I've been doing lots of videos so back to the business. Why do I or whoever think this is a good idea? Why would people want make videos instead of writing good docs? I mean, good docs. Everybody says what what good docs are. Why suddenly am I saying like, okay, drop everything, to learn a new craft? So uh, there are a few reasons. Uh, there are a few reasons, and um, be be before I start like reasoning with you, sort of, let's take a step back and think about what we're doing here. Like the first two, two talks were about how to write better documentation, and that's what we discuss when we get together in this meetup, or or when we grab a coffee with a colleague. So we are all about writing a text that is comprehensible and has many other features. That, that what? Feature, like, the goal, what we do mostly, is to help users to achieve their goals. That's why we write. Well, because we like writing, though we do. But we want users to actually achieve something. Find the information they want, but even they should actually solve the problem. The users come to the dogs, Probably they come to the Google when they have a problem. And they normally don't know what the problem is. So they don't know what they want, they Google something and they find our doc. And in our doc, we also often don't know what users want. So we try to, in, in many cases, try to link somewhere. So see that property page, see the animations guide, Oh, if you're doing this and that, if you're doing this and that, because we don't know how did the person land on this page, so we try to provide the context. And the, mm, not all of our docs like that, but sometimes we just need to provide lots of contents, and we have even else. We, so come, uh, go there, install that SDK, uh, read their docs. So lots of content, lots of context. And um, what I'm trying to say is that when you have lots of context, it makes sense to just make a video instead. Because you can just talk this through easily instead of saying, sending people somewhere, or instead of providing a huge wall of text with if then else, if then else, did you do this, did you do that. So that's one use case for the video. When you have to provide lots of Context, lots of small pieces of information, so the user understands the thing. Um, second reason: think about making a tutorial. You can take hundred screenshots and supply each screenshot with a piece of text, or you can make one video. And I can argue that making a single video is cheaper from point of your time, then to make a single video doing just that. Also, it's easier to maintain it, in a way. Do we have people in this room who actually had to make tutorials with 100 screenshots? You're not smiling, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> so yeah, so that's the second case. The third case, and now I'm getting worried. Um, so now I will say something and try to not throw hard things at me. Um, so, maybe not in heavy machinery industry, but in game development industry, um, the users of documentation are getting younger and younger. 
and um, these younger users or consumers of documentation, they cannot read. Like, they just don't consume the information in text. This is generation U2. They, when they need, like, when they want to learn how to screw in a light bulb, they YouTube it. They don't just Google it. Also, if you Google for, for anything yourself, YouTube shows you the, oh, Google shows you the YouTube results, like, on the first page on the top. Because that's how people learn how to do stuff. So, I'm trying to say that some, at least in my industry, a, a, the ever-growing subset of people using game development tools, they understand videos much better than text. And they can achieve with video, video much better than with a good documentation. I see in, in your eyes, like, but videos are not searchable, but like you cannot look inside. And yes, there are many drawbacks for videos. And uh, we won't talk about them today. <laughs> we'll just praise videos. Uh, no, but uh, we can discuss it in the Q&A section, actually. So, right. Um, these are three, um, three biggest reasons for me that I had started doing these videos. And uh, that's basically a screenshot from the YouTube page of, of, of the develop game, game engine for, for, for King that I've been doing. And it's like, I like, color coding how like how to make stuff on YouTube, that's outside of the scope of today's talk, but we can talk about it later on Q&A or something. So, these were the whys. The complex stuff, the stuff with uh, many graphical materials like illustrations, or stuff when the user of documentation is young and cannot read. Too young to read. <coughs> Now we're back to how. And that's gonna be both hard and easy. So how do you make a video? Well, do you need a camera? So that's a good question. That's already a hard question. Like when you as a tech writer, and again, this presentation is for people like like you, like me. We in 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 developer relations or in tech writers departments. We don't have budgets for video equipment, do we? Well, normally we don't. So I'm trying to, s to, to explain how, how to do these videos with, with the non-existing budgets and processes and, and all that. So do you need a camera? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. As a tech writer, you care about the screen and the content on the screen. Do you care about the person watching your face? Are you even comfortable recording your face on the camera? No is a good question is a good answer. Like no, I just want to write the dog just in the video way. So then you don't need the camera. Do you need a mic? Yes, you need a mic. Without a mic you cannot do anything. Like uh, and I will show an example of mic that I suggest using. Do you need anything else? Yes. You need a body. A body? Yes, you actually need a body. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, let's think about that. We are not professional narrators. We are not professional actors. What happens when we talk to the screen? And like when we are recording video, we're showing something on the screen. Have you tried recording yourself when you talk to the screen? You start mumbling. You start, like, your voice gets calmer and calmer, and, like, more and more boring. You're getting bored yourself. People cannot watch these videos. If you are telling something, and the keyword is telling, you cannot read from the script. Have you ever watched a video that has been run from a script? You skipped through it and done. So you cannot produce these videos yourself because your goal is to replace or like to make better docs so that people consume this, consume and understand this piece of information. So obviously, if people skip through the video or close it, like you haven't achieved the purpose. You invested lots of your time and energy and with zero. Effort. So you want these videos to be what you want to be engaging so people 
dog skin from dog clothes. So the body helps, apparently, if it's not just a spring, but somebody is here, and you're talking to somebody, you maintain the quality of your voice and narration. So yeah, a body. But still, um, a body is not enough, so let's get to the mic. So that's what I suggest using. This is a mic for mobile devices about 1,000 crowns. The key thing about it is that it's like portable, and you just attach it to like clip it. And it's small, it's portable, it's like good quality. Also, it plugs into a mobile device. I'll, 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 yeah, to mobile device. How quick is that? Also, there are two mics on the picture. Why is that? The two mics question I'll explain later on, but like, hmm, I suggested to use a body, and now I'm suggesting to use two mics, so here's a hint, but I'll talk about it later on. Why mobile device? Um, this plugs into a phone, and that's how I record that, um, mostly for practicality reasons, because the record uh, sound on a separate device. I'll explain why in a bit. Um, have you watched YouTube videos with people explaining something and they have this beautiful podcast microphones like Blue or something? So why am I not suggesting to follow the same and have a big mic? Because you are in a meeting room, you are in the office, you're not building a home studio. Look at Kala's stuff. Like he travels with a huge with a huge bag. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm suggesting you to not follow his example. <laughs> <laughs> much. Or you could buy a cargo bike, it's great. <laughs> yeah, a cargo bike also helps. And uh, good luck traveling on a plane with that. But yeah. So <laughs> I, I like being I, I like being mobile uh, or ultra mobile or super mobile. And if I ever need uh, to, to attach this to the laptop, there will be a slide about that. But now the camera. I don't like the cameras because they're big. And uh, I suggest using this and I use this or pretty much any camera camera would do if you still want to have a camera. The thing about this camera is cheap is 4,000 crowns. Um, it records in 4K. What does it mean uh, 4K? That basically means uh, that I can make mistakes with panning and, and like I can just put this on the, on, on the table, I guess for its free zoom I, ca I can remake the video in, in post processing. But let's not focus on the camera. I, I really, really think in tech documentation videos the face of the narrator is not that important unless, unless you have to do lots of explanation. So some like in many of videos that I do, sometimes the the picture on the screen is quite static because there is a lot of recap. So like here, I'm like showing something, and then I'm sitting in front of you and recapping, and recapping, and recapping. And that's what I often do in the videos. And recapping with a static slide, well, that's not that great. And also, that's why it's switched to the face. Another reason I switched to face and I use the camera is that, uh, as you remember, uh, I was the technical face of the company and people should have recognized me. So, yeah. That's that's the reason for the face uh, for the face and also like more dynamics they can switch what's on the screen so people don't get bored. I mean, <coughs> static picture and the young people just switch or click, click away. Next, so how do you plug it all together? Uh, you can do it differently. I use uh, something that is called OBS. That's basically the tool that. Probably you have some of you have kids who do stream games. Does anybody have a kid who streams games? No? 
oh, where are the streamer kids? <laughs> <What? That's... laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> you see, I'm streaming yourself, well? Yeah. Okay, we have a role model to share, very, very nice. <laughs> okay, you're back to being my role model. <laughs> So, uh, this is the tool the kids use, this is a tool the many broadcasting professionals use, and this is a tool I suggest using because it's free. It's like the entry barrier is quite high, it has few buttons, that's the tool. It has a few buttons, but lots of things to set up and to make right. What you see on this slide is that I have taken a part of the screen, which is a beautiful waves and a nice Swedish weather. Um, that's the input from, from the camera on this device. It gets attached to, uh, to, to the computer. Then I grab this part of the screen, I rotate it, I reframe it. I can do whatever I can. I can overlay immediately like the, the whatever my face from, from this cam or, or something else. And this is in real time and encoded. And um, and then I can attach that advertised mobile microphone to the computer using this. So yes, apparently microphones for uh, computers and microphones for phones have different jacks. <laughs> Do they look different, right? Like they're hell of a different. So you need that. <laughs> so who can easily notice the difference? The one in the middle has three lines, which is the phone one. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we probably a person who tried. <laughs> yeah, so it's only an adapter. Adapter is 150 crowns. So it's not expensive, but then again, it's like, why is that? Well, that's how it is. Uh, live. Um, so. And that's how uh, the videos work eventually uh, for me. So the screen capture, the, the, the face and the voice, I normally do this in three different tracks. So I record my voice using the mobile uh, microphone to this device. I record uh, the face using the camera that you have seen. And uh, I record the screen using the software that you have seen. And then I go to Premiere, Adobe Premiere, that's expensive software, but we had it at, at King, and uh, uh, that's standard like for game developers to, to, to use Adobe um, software. So we just had it, so, but that's expensive, you can use anything else. Why? Now why, if it's possible to just grab all the video streams and audio and do it in real time and just like, be done with the video. So the thing is, I am not a perfect narrator, I am not trained as an artist, I sometimes pose like this, right? <laughs> you can do it like in the video. The kids just kick away. Um, I want this to be edited out. Also, I gesture a lot, as you have noticed. And uh, if I have only video screens, one single video stream like that, right? And I want to edit, edit like out the silence. One frame would be like that, another frame would be like, I know, something bad. And this, I cannot do this up together. So if I have a screen and, uh, and, and uh, the person separately, it's easy for me to, to fix the post. Um, if you are much better than I, and if you can narrate perfectly without missaying words, misspelling, not forgetting something, and still operating the computer, you're a perfect human being. Just, mm. just don't, don't be like me. Don't, don't. I, I'm not your role model. Uh, just try good thing. Um, another reason for me having it all separately and then doing the labor of putting it all together is that, and we're going to return again to that younger audience, where does younger audience hang out? Like, not TikTok audience, but like, <laughs> older than TikTok. Twitch. Twitch, that's one. Snapchat? Yeah, yes, but also Instagram, but yeah. Snapchat is also good, is a good answer. The thing is, they consume 
content vertically. Mm -hmm. like, but they just don't have the reflex of rotating the phone. It's mm -hmm. not built into their hands. It's built in my hands, but not in younger people's hands. So they consume videos vertically. And I started doing this as, as experiments, and then I figured out that if you make horizontal videos good for YouTube, if you make vertical video, suddenly it's friendly to all the social media, including LinkedIn, where young people don't hang out. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, just less work for me. Why do I care about these one minute videos with technical information for, for social media? Well, because that's how you make people interested in your technology. It's you can do this as an ad, you can just post it and see what, what happens. Maybe people click. So probably that's more for your marketing department, but in developer relations it's sort of a thing. It's so yeah, I also do this vertical videos. And you can see that it's not one person, it's two on this. So yeah, we'll, we're back to the body. So when I introduced the concept of the body, I suggested that the body sits in front of your lizards. And uh, here the body is by my side. So how does it work? Exactly like this. Um, at, uh, when I speak to tech writers, and, and I like speaking to tech writers, it's a like, huge new world for me. Um, so you or your colleagues tell me that and we have discussed this today, like, in order to write the doc, you go to a developer and tell the developer, like, how does this feature work? Imagine, like, that's normally a physical meeting, right? Or is it a phone? Or is it a chat? Still, you have to have this initial meeting. Mm -hmm. If you have a luxury of it being physical, not, not over the internet, you can just record that. And that's what happened here, and, and that's how I had been producing many videos. Uh, I, it wasn't easy, but because programmers hate to be filmed and recorded, and, uh, and, and, and the whole video concept. But uh, after a little while, all after a little while, they got used to the camera and they got used to me recording these first conversations with them. So basically, uh, whenever a programmer develops a feature, we would sit together and I would ask him or her how this stuff works. Exactly what you do before writing the docs. And I record that. Then uh, that's why we need two mics. Um, I record that and I edit out 80% of what we have recorded. So 80% that's just doesn't appear in the video. 20% ends up in the video. And uh, people watch that. So whatever doesn't make sense for the video, well, gets edited out. What makes sense? Again, the pictures, the context, like when you click lots of things, like what makes sense ends up in the video. Oh, what doesn't make sense? Does not end up in the video. How complex is this? <laughs> um, so yeah, if I wanted to leave you with one idea for the night, it's like, why don't you record yourself in programmer once or twice and see what happens? Maybe first that could be, you know, for your own internal use and see how this works. And maybe you'll develop skills to make uh, to become a YouTuber, so your kids will be proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, we haven't discussed about many things. We haven't discussed about, okay, so you mastered the video production, what's next? You have to put this somewhere. Does your company have YouTube, internal, external, whose account do you use? How do you market these videos? Like, that's, that's a whole different conversation that we... And I don't have like one answer for that. It's, it's, it's complex and it's hard and it's... And <coughs> how do you make the videos as search results? That's also a huge conversation. So it's, 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 it's not easy. It's not just like you record videos and become famous and, and uh, have one million subscribers. Not really, but... Um, 
you could embed these videos in the documentation, so that's like one way of doing that. Other than that, I am ready for your questions. Yay! Ines was first. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, who is the audience of your videos programmers. with developers? Only programmers. Yeah, only programmers. Are you saying that they watch videos that are 27 minutes long? Yeah. Uh, that's what I... <laughs> that's that's what I felt to notice. Yeah. 15 minutes, that's a gap. Uh -huh. no, but on your... Yes, one there of were lots of 13 minute videos. There was a 27 minute video that had and most more. hits. Yeah. 7.2k views. Yeah. <laughs> How just, is that? Possible? I just look cute on that video. I don't know where it was. <laughs> no. Um, so 15 minutes, that's a cap. The 5 to 15, that's, that's the ideal length. The reason I was doing 13 minute videos was that... It was so, a killer feature. Yeah, no? exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't miss that one. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> heavy, um, heavy, heavy. Um, it's the headline um, itself. <laughs> I was... Like, one way of doing things, and you can see that there is like 15 minute videos called Live Update 2. Apparently there was Live Update 1, so I split. I tried different approaches and mm. saw what works best. So it's, it's, there is no manual. On, on, on the internet, how do you make videos for programmers? I had to figure it out uh, myself. And uh, so this page is one of the good examples of what to not do. In a way, like for example, splitting si single topic in two parts <coughs> gets good viewership for the first part and shitty viewership for the second part. Uh, but like, yes, but the feature is like big. It doesn't fit in, into 15 minutes. Well, then it's cut the feature, do the subset of the feature, or focus on, on the job to do, like what is the problem for the audience, split the problem, take the smaller scope of the problem, problem. 15 minutes, that's a gap, like that's, that's, that's the short uh, answer, and uh, focus the videos to solve the problems, not to explain the feature. The reason I was asking is not actually the length of the video, it's the audience itself, like it won't apply to everyone, it really depends on who your audience is. Like if I record a developer, but that information is for someone who is not a developer, that's not going to work. Because if you put a developer in a room and they start rambling without any sense or order, that doesn't help anyone. No, you have to... So the way it works for me is that I don't... I don't let the developer go loose and just talk about <laughs> what they want. I, I have my questions. I have my questions, I keep it tense for the developer and they answer only my questions. If they go loose, well, they can, I'll just cut it out, that's fine. But normally they don't and um, I focus on the job to do for, for the user or for the consumer of this video. In my case, this is all programmers. And that's why it makes sense for the programmer who wrote this feature to explain how it works. Yeah. So it's like uh, um, like any other content, video content should be reviewed as well. I assume. Like, who actually are your reviewers? Uh, well, the developer who, who explains how the feature works. If mm -hmm. he told something, I mean, he wrote the feature or she. Mm -hmm. So. I I know I, I normally know less than the person who wrote the piece of functionality how it works. I ask clarifying questions, like uh, and, and what is this and what is that. I I always try to represent the user of our tool or the tool that I represent. What happens? What happens if that? What happens if, if that? So and and and, and uh, then the programmer has to explain what happens and tells like, oh no, this is not right, this doesn't work, or shouldn't work, or just don't do this. And that's also fine. But uh, in, uh, um, uh, so since the actually your video actually, for example, published publicly, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. can be. Yeah. So uh, then in this case, it's a little bit different from uh, other type of uh, content because other type of content, for example, the textual content. They could be published internally, but if your a video content is uh, intended for external users, so do you actually involve, for example, marketing team or legal department to review your video to see if you actually expose any confidential information that can be 
you know, uh, approached by competitors? Yeah. So I, uh, the, the way we did it is basically mm -hmm. instead of involving marketing and um, legal each time, I basically had a legal and PR training. Uh -huh. So I sort of knew what's, what's possible, what's not. And uh, for the yellow videos, for example, here, these were meant not for the technical part of King, but for the consumer-facing part of King. So these were scrutinized heavily. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so all, all of them are public, all of them are on YouTube, but the yellow ones were for more consumer audience. And as you see, they have King logo in the corner. And uh, so yeah, lots of people lots of people wanted to have a say in that mm -hmm. and uh, the time so like a blue video can take me say about 30 to 50 minutes to record and one to three hours to process so it's not a lot like four hours totally that's that's not much if you think about what would it take for you to write the doc with all the pictures and that so mm -hmm. it's not much and for yellow video it's like more of the month because they always have something they don't like so for example they, they can be a few frames you can probably see like on one of the yellow videos like there is an office involved and and uh, sometimes in the office you have names of people on their desks so one of the further desks that was named like exposed if you zoom in carefully you can read person's name and uh, legal people didn't like it. And then um, also like default for artist video, uh, I'm talking to an artist and then she mentions like look what I do. I, 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 I <clears throat> long story short, she mentions Disney as her inspiration. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Everybody is inspired by Disney. Like who who is waiting for Disney Plus to show up in Sweden? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So everybody is inspired by Disney. What's wrong with that? I don't know, but I had to remove this. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it's not a video. Oh, it's not a picture. It's, it, it's it's not anything. She's like, and this is almost like a Disney look. Yeah, everybody yeah. knows what a Disney look. Yeah. So like, we cannot have this in video. And it totally broke the narrative. Mm. And and she ended up stupid like. This has almost like beautifully beautiful look, something like that. And now legal were happy and marketing were happy. Like beautifully beautiful, that's good. Beautifully dif Disney, that's 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 not good. Uh, yeah. How quickly does the content get updated? The videos. Like if you're talking about a certain feature or something. <coughs> I assume there is further iterations yeah. on the feature, so how Correct. quickly does it become irrelevant and outdated? Well, uh, I mean, the videos serve the purpose, right? So they, they, they are, these are not ads for the features. These are the videos that help people to achieve their goals. So if there is a new button, maybe you don't have to, 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 to implement the video. If the way has changed, like something has dramatically changed. Probably you want to introduce the, the new video. Do you remove the, the old video? No, you don't. Instead, you advertise the new video in the old video because Google likes the old video with lots of views. And that's how, but it has misleading information. But you have to redirect the people from the old video to the new video. And uh, yeah. So you don't replace stuff. You just create new stuff and you expect people to consume new stuff. Can I make a plea rather than a like question? Yeah. If you are going to make YouTube videos and it's a really good idea and I really think you should, please, please manually update your subtitles because YouTube subtitling sucks and it's really <laughs> bad. <laughs> I've spent probably six hours this week updating videos that have automatic closed captions on them. So wow. please, please do it. Or <laughs> yeah. use Rev. Yeah. Rev. It's like a dollar a minute to get subtitles written for your videos. Oh, still worth double checking. Yes, definitely <laughs> still double checking. <laughs> <laughs> Is it human beings who do that? Yeah. yeah. That's cool. I 
I do subtitles only for the vertical videos because people don't bother to turn the sound from consuming. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're in the toilet, you kind of get sound out. So, mm. so that's why I use, uh, I use subtitles for, for vertical videos. For YouTube videos, it's, it's yeah, you have to do some services. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just a consumer. What Google does, like if you want to do this yourself, there is a hack ish hack ish. Upload the video to YouTube, wait whatever 20 minutes while Google AI watches your video and uh, writes subtitles, then you can download subtitles mm -hmm. and edit them. Yeah. So yeah. that's 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 much faster because you have all the timelines. Mm -hmm. You have to tweak the timelines though because yeah. mm -hmm. it doesn't look good. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. The subtitles, are they searchable? The text no. Are they no. 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 They will be. Hmm? Soon they will be. Really? Yes. Okay. What? How? 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 Oh, AI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I heard yeah. that, but they can see the working. What I often do, and uh, basically in, in the description or in the comments, and I do it both ways. I just write the sort of table of content for the video, if you like, with the seconds in, and, and it sort of helps people when they bother to scroll down to comments. And normally they don't, but if they do, like for example, if you're consistent in doing that, your auditor knows, like, there. Or if you point down from the video, then this is possible within the first five seconds of the video, then they bother to scroll down and click through the table of contents. So that helps just a little. I'm not sure how tape, how description or comments are uh, reflect on Google search results. I didn't see the correlation, but it helps people. A question, how do you uh, sort of um, rate success? Is it only the number of views or do you have any other ways of understanding when you are successful or not? With yes, YouTube. people demand more videos. Like you, mm -hmm. the, you, you put out documentation and people are like, when is the video about this topic going to show up? So, so, so that's, that, but that's, you know, my personal. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not about the success, it's, it's more about the proof of concept. Because, I mean, as you understand, imagine yourself, you know, going to your boss and saying, no, I'm a YouTuber now, I'm going to produce videos. <laughs> so it's like, it's, it's challenging. So obviously I had to prove myself. And like these validations, they, 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 they were a huge, huge help. And, and that's why I brought in like these three reasons when the videos work. So these were the, the, the kinds of videos that resonated with people. Obviously you have views. Obviously, I mean, you can come up with, 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 with any KPI, like a number or, or, or of, of, of views here. Then you can put somewhere a link and track that. And, but it depends of who do you make this KPI for. My main KPI was that I could continue doing the videos because I liked that. It also... I thought they were helpful, but I needed to prove my thoughts. So this were my KPIs. But so how many videos do you have posted on YouTube currently? Do you know? Good question. We can. It's like youtube.com slash default videos. You can, you, you can see that. I don't remember. It. I mean, since they were cheap to produce, like I could do easily two or three videos a week while doing other job. And like doing as in, both planning, filming, putting out, and doing lots of other work. It's, it's think that 15 minute video can be done within three hour like block time. When when everybody knows what what's happening, as in like you know the meeting room, the sound capabilities of the meeting room, for example, the lighting. So then um, you know how easy it is to talk to developers. Like you optimize like all the stuff, not just the video pro procedure, but like the whole thing. Final question: Have you been censored? I mean, have the YouTube taken things off you? I don't put music on my videos. No, but I mean uh, even the pictures, the film. That 
uh, you publish something on YouTube and uh, YouTube censored it? They don't like copyrighted material, so I don't use sounds while YouTube provides sound library. Oh no, I started using sound later on. <laughs> so, but only for intros and outros. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, all the pictures, both in this presentation and from whatever else I use, is normally my personal ones. I never use stock pictures, like including uh, this one. You can is even see the model for this picture, like there back. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so that's Mobile World Congress Barcelona, cancelled today. Uh, not today, but this year. And, and, and uh, yeah, so no, no. So that is not really an issue, I mean, when you are this kind of professional no. content? You just don't use copyrighted or legal material. And have your legal department involved, I guess. That's a must. <laughs> like, at the concept level, mm -hmm. but not for each video. So the, the, the developer-focused videos, they didn't care that much, despite these videos were public and also King Brand and all that. But consumer-focused videos, like with King logo, talking about King games, or like they wanted to watch every frame. Mm. With them with like magnifying glass. Wow. Mm. So it's 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 their thing. Mm -hmm. For for say for Unity, for example, from what I see, again, like developers are much more for forgiving and it's technical and it's 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 yeah less problem. So it's same as with presentations. Uh, it depends on the audience. Sometimes the legal department wants to, to watch their slides and give you lots of training. Sometimes, like for example, for this meetup, probably the previous speakers didn't really talk to their legal department. So why? Well, because you're talking to colleagues and all that. So here, yeah, like you're talking to programmers. If if uh, the speakers were talking probably like from, from a different audience, maybe not to colleagues immediately, but like to mix the audience. Probably legal department would want would have wanted to have said. Yeah, I, I guess uh, time is up for yeah. us about Q and questions. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have more questions to? Oh, I'm around. But you will be here. Right? Yeah. Around. Okay. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. some time for lighting talks so if anyone who has you know interesting topic or just want to share your thoughts you're welcome the floor is yours and we are all here to listen <laughs>